develops electromagnetic systems where they can put someone into a state and they can go into, and this gets into a cosmological complex discussion now, a lower astral, a denser astral field, and some would call this demonic, and they can actually see beings and creatures there and bring them in three-dimensional and materialize in flesh and blood through these electronics. So a lot of these things that are people are seeing have nothing to do with interstellar and extraterrestrial. So when I'm talking, when I talk about the interstellar civilizations, Because many of the experiences that shamans report uh, in altered states of consciousness with spirits are really quite eerily identical to the experiences that are reported by people who believe they've been abducted by UFOs in the modern world. I had one alien type experience under ayahuasca. As you can see, I am not an artist. But I did my best. And I, I, again, it was one of those occasions when I opened my eyes and said no, and I stopped the vision, stopped it in its tracks, because I was afraid, because I was convinced there was a, these ships in the sky and a funnel of light, and I was convinced that I was going to be drawn up, and I didn't want to go. And my cowardice got the better of my courage, and I said no, and afterwards regretted it. We know a lot about UFO abduction experiences from the work of a number of researchers, David Jacobs, Bud Hopkins, and, and the late uh, Dr. John Matt, who was professor of psychiatry at Harvard University, uh, who recorded... Um, people started coming to him in his practice, very troubled people, very, they'd had very disturbing experiences, and they believed that they'd been abducted by aliens. And unlike most psychiatrists who just dismiss this as madness, uh, John Mack uh, took it seriously and, and uh, didn't judge. He wanted to document their experiences. And so from his work, we have a vast documentation of a very thorough scientific documentation of the experiences of UFO abductees, crystal that are found in the middle, middle of this environment. Um, what's depicted here is one of the things that happens. Sometimes you get a sense of being taken up into the heavens. You may be on a a vehicle of some kind, or in this case on a, on a bird, uh, and carried off into this enchanted other world. Or you may be taken underground, a sense of passing deep into the earth, uh, or you may be taken underwater by fairy anthropes, by human fish mermaids. voice from over his left shoulder. For one hour, at precisely the same time over the next three days, Crowley said that the voice dictated to him the book of the law, the work that would become the Bible of his new religion. And the content of this revelation? I am the snake that giveth knowledge, the spirit said, to worship me, take wine and strange drugs, whereof I will tell my prophet. <laughs> The book of the law, it just really is ripping up everything. It's ripping up the Bible, it's ripping up the Koran, you know, it, it's uh, ripping up all the holy books and saying, we're starting fresh now. This is the word, this is the word of the new eon. We're going to peck out the eyes of Christ on the cross. It's very, very blasphemous. It's all about liberation. It's all about having no restrictions at all. You follow your path, you follow your goal in life, and you do that above all else.
This was Crowley's primary goal, attainable in his beliefs to the ancient systems of the Hebrew and Greek Kabbalah and other forms of metaphysical, quote, science. All practitioners of magic, philosophically based occultists such as the Theosophists or Freemasons, have been consumed with interest of finding the origins of the human race. You just have to read what they write. It is claimed by the founders of many of these secret orders that they have received guidance from direct contact with those who call themselves the secret chiefs of the great white brotherhood. These masters, we are told, have literally dictated the laws and agendas of these mystery schools of ancient thought and wisdom. Now, Crowley, in the latter part of the last century and the beginning of this, the 20th, claimed to have had many such indescribable contacts, but two were of the greatest importance in apparently redirecting his entire life and thus changing the face of modern magic for all who followed. And as astonishing as it may seem, it may be that almost a century ago, Crowley was given a revelation about things that are coming to pass, even as we speak here tonight. The first contact that Crowley relates was in April of 1904 in Cairo. Cairo, by the way, is lucid Arabic for Mars. Crowley tells us that he encountered an entity who he considered to be his, quote, holy guardian angel. This ident entity identified himself as Hiwa and proceeded to dictate to Crowley the so-called Book of the Law, or what would eventually come to some the canon of 20th century magical practice. In this book, Iwas decreed that, quote, do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. And then he goes on to smoke and the Shanga and the leader of the Ryan movement, which say there is no God, there is no soul, and of course there is no Holy Spirit. So it's a pleasure to support your website and your action uh, to promote atheism worldwide because uh, we, the Ryan movement, use the same technique uh, as the religious group who try to proselytize worldwide to have as many followers as possible and I think it's good also that atheists uh, use the same technique to proselytize also and to counterbalance uh, the bad influence of, of God believers. So uh, it's very important for me to push people to read the message I wrote which is a completely atheist and rationalist message which explains uh, that we have been created by an advanced civilization coming from another planet. Uh, in, in a way, it is, this is the third way. Uh, before there was a believing in God who created the, uh, everything on Earth in, in uh, seven days, then there was a, the theory of evolution, and here come a uh, third way. We, being the fruit of a scientific creation from scientists of a very advanced civilization. The king of the money, the dollar, is in a free fall, and I think it will not stop. And uh, the only solution the Elohim explained to us is the creation of a world government and a world currency, which is a first step toward the dis disappearance of money at large. But in first step, for, for few, a few years, we need a world currency to save the world. Uh, really to save the world, because uh, if uh, it continues like that now with the free fall of the dollar then the destruction of all the financial organization and banks and money system his deep involvement in um, uh, personal use of drugs on himself and others uh, black magic when you say black magic what are you talking about i mean some of the things that i read in this jack of material it sounds just absolutely unbelievable. What are you talking about when you say this? Well, the funny thing is, is that the actual truth is, is about as far out as uh, Scientology itself. Uh, really, the basis of Scientology, which is rather hidden and covered over, is uh, the occult, uh, the uh, uh, deep involvement with uh, satanic uh, powers. We felt that uh, he was deeply involved with... Uh, a uh, British uh, black magician called Alistair Crowley. Uh, 
and through putting himself in deep hypnotic trances and the use of drugs on himself, he wanted to become the most powerful being in the world. It all began 75 million years ago. Back then, there was a galactic federation of planets, which was ruled over by the evil Lord Zemu. And they had elected a fellow by the name of Zemu, uh, could be spelled X-E-M-U, to the Supreme Ruler. Zenu thought his galaxy was overpopulated. These planets average 178 billion human beings per planet. 178 billion. There were 250 billion on this planet. The name of this planet was Tiyak, and this is known as the bomb place, and this is the evil place. This is the place where they all got smashed. And so he rounded up countless aliens from all different planets, and then had those aliens frozen. The trick was to shoot somebody, disable somebody, very often a needle into a lung, and at the same time to hit him with frozen alcohol and glycol, which preparation is guaranteed to pick up a baby. How he had to do was pick him up and put him in a refrigerator, and they had him, boy. Because he tried to exteriorize from the body, there he was, frozen. The frozen alien bodies were loaded on the Zenu's galactic cruiser, which looked like DC-8, except with rocket engines. And uh, they threw them into collection points, boxed them up in boxes, threw them into space planes, which are the exact copy of DC-8. The D DC-8 airplane is the exact copy of the space plane of that day. Cruisers then took the frozen alien bodies to our planet, Earth, and dumped them into the volcanoes of Hawaii. And they took these people in boxes and so forth, and they dumped them, and then they set off hydrogen bombs on the top of each primary volcano there is on this particular planet. The aliens were no longer frozen. They were dead. The souls of those aliens, however, lived on and all floated up towards the sky. But the evil Lord Zenu had prepared for this. Zenu didn't want their souls to return, and so he built giant soul catchers in the sky. And when they blew up, it blew the Thetans into the air, and after the bomb, an electronic ribbon, which also was a type of standing wave, was erected over the area. The tremendous winds of the planet blew every Thetan there was straight into those particular vacuum zones which had been created. ...to a huge soul brainwashing facility, which Xenu had also built on Earth. There, the souls were forced to watch days of brainwashing material, which tricked them into believing a false reality. These were brought down, packed up, and put in front of uh, projection machines, which with sound and color pictures uh, first gave them the implant, which you know as clearing cores. And then a whole track implanted, which you know as OT2. After this, however, up about a, the remainder of the 36 days, which is the bulk of them, is taken up with a 3D super colossal motion picture, uh, which has to do with God, the devil, uh, space opera, uh, etc. They go five pictures to five words. Zenu then released the alien soul, which roams the earth aimlessly in the fog of confusion. It goes on for about 36 days, and then these poor bastards were let wander out. At the dawn of man, the souls finally found bodies which they could grab onto. They attached themselves to all mankind, which still to this day causes all our fears, our confusions, and our problems.